It's become kind of a tradition for me to do a last minute Halloween project every year. If you want to see previous years, check out the links in the description. But the idea for this year actually started last Halloween. My wife and I put a big bowl of candy out front for trick-or-treaters while we took our kids around the block. We weren't gone very long, but by the time that we got back, you guessed it, the bowl was empty. Which means that some kid or kids either took way more than they should have, or they dumped the whole thing into their bags. So, for this year's project, I'm gonna get back at those kids. <laughs> All right, so this is what I came up with to hopefully scare away kids who are gonna try and steal the whole bowl of candy. It's a candy bowl stand with a switch on the top of it that when you take the bowl of candy off, it will scream at them, turn on a strobe light, shake back and forth, and actually send you a text message letting you know to go out and check your candy bowl. Or to let you know to check your security camera footage to see if you caught any kids screaming and running away. It uses a couple of Arduino-like boards from Adafruit, which I'll go over here in just a minute, as well as a 3D printed enclosure and a laser cut tombstone to go on the top. And as usual, all the parts that you need to make this, all the code that you need, all the files to print and laser cut this, all that will be in a blog post that I'll link to below. Now, it would have been awesome to have some reaction videos to include here for you to watch, so keep an eye out on my Instagram account, and if I get any reactions, I'll put them up there. No promises, there's obviously a chance that nobody will try and steal the bowl of candy, but fingers crossed. So let me open it up, and I'll show you how it works. So the top lifts off, and it's got this print-in-place hinge, which I was pretty pleased with. This board is a Feather M4. It's got a Cortex M4 processor in it. These boards are pretty similar to Arduinos, but they're really cool because they're a lot more powerful for one thing. Like for example, this thing can play audio directly off of one of the analog pins without the need for a separate board. But you can also program these using Adafruit's embedded version of Python called CircuitPython. And the way that you do that, you just plug it into your computer and it will show up as a disk drive with some Python scripts on it that you can just open up and edit directly. Whenever you save the file, it will reboot the board running your new code that you just wrote. That is pretty awesome and so much easier than using the Arduino IDE and writing in C code like you see me do in previous projects. So I'm using this board to play the scream sound which is going through this amplifier to these speakers. I got these out of some old PC speakers that I got at Goodwill for like $4. So that's a great place to look for speakers for these kinds of projects. So that's playing the sound and it's also watching for this button to be triggered. It's also hooked up to this continuous servo here and controlling the speed, making it go back and forth to rock the whole thing when it gets set off. This board right here is an ESP32, which you've seen me use in a couple of projects previously, but this is being used in a pretty interesting way. This is meant to be a companion board for a separate board that's actually running your program. You'll notice there's no USB port on it, so you can't plug it into your computer and load code on it directly. It's meant to be used as a sort of accessory board to a main board that's running your actual code. That allows you to use something way more powerful like this Cortex M4 and just use the ESP32 to connect to Wi-Fi and do things over the internet. So I'm doing two things with this. I'm making it so that when this button is tripped, it will send a text message to your phone. It's also hosting a tiny web page with a button on it that you can load up with your phone and set it off directly without somebody having to actually trigger it with the candy bowl. This third board here is a relay and it's being used in exactly the way that you might have seen me use in the Lamp Zephyr project quite a while ago. So this relay is what's turning on and off the strobe light whenever it's triggered. The eyes up here at the top behind the tombstone, those are actually being controlled by a separate Arduino board, uh, exactly like I did last year in my Halloween eyes, which you can actually see behind me here. The reason that I used a separate board for that that's actually being powered off of the first board is because, first of all, I wasn't even sure if this M4 could handle running that code for animating the eyes as well as doing everything else at the same time. It may be possible to do that, I'm not sure, but I am using the main board to control the LED pin on those screens to turn them on and off whenever it gets tripped. All right, so that's about it for the hardware. Now let me show you the code that's running all this. Okay, so I've got my board plugged into my computer and you can see this CircuitPy drive that shows up on my computer. I can just open that up and here's everything that's actually running when it's plugged in and doing everything. Here's the scream sound effects. I actually have a shorter and a longer version of it. There's a secrets file. This is what you would plug in your Wi-Fi network name, your Wi-Fi password, 
as well as your access key that you will need to be able to send a text message. I'll show you that in just a minute. And there's also this main.py, which is a Python script, and that's the main program that's running on it. So you can edit that in any text editor, and whenever you save it, it will reboot the board and it will run the updated code on it. So there's a pretty good editor that Adafruit recommends called Mu, and it's pretty good. Usually I like to use VS Code for most of my coding. This is pretty good because it's, it just works out of the box with their boards. Um, it's got a nice serial monitor here at the bottom that you don't have to do anything to set up, so it's just a lot easier to get going than VS Code. And then we can load up our code here. So I'm just gonna run through it really briefly. There's actually not a whole lot to it. Up here we load that secrets file that will have everything that you need to connect to your Wi-Fi, all that good stuff. We're loading our Scream sound effect, setting up pins for things like the trigger pin, the servo, so that we can control that. The pin that we're using to power the backlight on the secondary board, telling it which pins we're gonna use to talk to that ESP32 board, and doing a few more things to set that up. We're configuring the onboard LED and telling the Wi-Fi manager which pin to use to change colors of that LED. So when you first turn it on, the onboard LED will be red, and then once it connects to Wi-Fi, that'll turn to green. Got a couple of functions here for starting and stopping the audio. I've got a function called scare kid here, which will turn on the eyes and the strobe light, play the scream sound, alternate the direction of the servo to make it go back and forth every quarter of a second for a few seconds to let the sound stop playing, stop the scream, and turn everything else off. This function is what gets called when the candy bowl button actually triggers it. So we call that scare kid function up there, and then we're using a service called text belt to send the text message. So this is the service that I'm using. It does cost money, but it's really cheap. Like a few bucks will get you a couple of hundred texts to be able to send. Really fun for projects like this. And it is super easy to get going. You press the generate API key button, you give it your email address and send them a few bucks with PayPal and they will give you an API key that you can plug in to that secrets file that I showed you. So inside that secrets file, there will be a phone number, the message that it's gonna send, and then the key that you'll get after you send them a few dollars. That web page that has the button to trigger it, this is the function that'll get called whenever you push that button. And so all that that does is call the scare kid function up here, uh, but it does not send the text message. Since you triggered that yourself, you don't really need a notification. Uh, this stuff down here, you don't really need to worry about too much. This is just telling it where files uh, are for that web server that hosts that button. A couple more setup functions for the uh, server and the Wi-Fi. Now when you run it, it will show the IP address that it gets from your router. And so if I save the file, it will reboot the board and after a few seconds, it will print out the IP address like it says that it's gonna do here. This is what you can put in your web browser on your phone or on your desktop to be able to manually trigger it. This is the main loop like you've seen in a lot of Arduino projects that I've shown on this channel or pretty much any Arduino project, period. It'll just keep doing this over and over and over again and it's uh, pretty simple what it's doing in here. It tries to update the server, in other words, see if anyone's trying to hit it with their web browser. It also checks to see if the trigger pin has been triggered. This triggered Boolean that I'm keeping track of here, this is so that if you lift up the candy bowl, it won't just keep setting itself off over and over again. It will only do that if it changes state. And then this here, if it sees an error from the ESP32 board, it'll just reboot it and hopefully get it up and running again. And that's about it for the code. I'll have this available on GitHub. I'll link to it in the blog post along with everything else. I'm not gonna bother going over the code that's running the eyes in the second board. Um, if you wanna see how to do that, check out the video that I'll link to below for the Halloween project that I did last year. It covers all of that in detail. All right guys, well, I think that that about covers everything. I was gonna try and keep it pretty short and sweet since this is last minute, and I doubt anyone's gonna actually run out and make this right away. But if this inspires you for other projects or you take bits and pieces of it to use in your own project, let me know in the comments below or stop by the forums and show us what you made. As always, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.